Thanks for joining me in this episode. I'm going to be showing how to add an ensuite toilet room into an existing room. That might, may sound a bit weird, but what I'm planning to do is partition off one of my main center rooms to allow me to have a small ensuite type toilet area. I've already kind of put all the equipment into the middle of the room and made some space to see what the spacing will be like here. So stay tuned on this episode. I'm gonna basically walk through all the journey and how I'm doing this. It's adding in one of those toilets that are the, the sink is as part of the toilet, it's like a two in one toilet, just so it takes the least amount of space. So I need to make sure I already luckily have a hot and cold water running up to one of the rooms. It used to be like a little vanity um, sink in one of the rooms. So I'll need to lift up the floorboards, bring those hot and cold waters to here for the sink, as well as the water for the toilet and add a soil pipe. So in this episode, I'll explain as much of this as possible. And I'll also might put in a second part where you see the finish of this. This is like a weekend project. If you're good at DIY, you should be able to get this done in about five or six days. That includes all the partitioning and everything. So I raised the floorboards. I found the pipes. Uh, I used one of these little uh, Ferrex oscillating saws from Lidl. So like you could probably see a bit of a review for that and see how good it does. But if you don't have this tool, you don't want it. If you've got it, it's very, very useful because you can cut a number of things that are hard to reach and it's, it proved quite successful, even though after a little while it stopped working, which was a bit weird, but I'll, I'll talk more about that. So what I'm doing here is we're gonna be putting a long stretch of pipe. So I got a full length, a three full lengths of copper 50 millimeter pipe, pushing them through from the existing location all the way through the floorboards and you'll see here this is where they are i'm going to show you how i do the join i'm using solder lead and joining these together myself as well so over the years slight bit of practice with these kind of helps you so you see the pipes come through i had to include a join because a full length of pipe was not enough so i'm gonna have to put a join in these to make them slightly longer to add on for the hot and cold water so it's straightforward with this kind of thing piping if you've done it before it's straightforward if not I'll kind of give you a crash course. Again, this isn't a guide. It's more of me going through the process to show you. So I've separated the pipes there just so that when I heat one, it doesn't affect the second pipe. And we're adding a bit of flux. Flux helps the, the solder flow around and make sure obviously the pipes are clean. So you use like a, a wire wool brush and clean that. You add in the butt join uh, copper pipe section and then is basically the case of heating it and adding uh, lead. So you heat it until it bubbles. Sometimes the pipes, uh, the lead joints might not fit on straight away. So that may mean that you the pipe is not round or it hasn't been cut properly. I've got one of these which help out very well. They basically round off, uh, clear the round pipe, 15 millimeter and the bigger size, and you've got a little burr as well. So you put the pipe in, you basically spin it around a couple of times because sometimes the joints don't fit on if there's like a bit of debris or something on the pipe because it's not able to have a smooth joint. So see how nice and shiny that pipe becomes? That cleans it, which then allows you to then follow through. So you can also deburr it kind of with this. Um, there's, you can do this like really intense way. You can get specific tools for all of these uh, separate tasks. But I found this worked quite well for me. So this tool you can get on Amazon. is like five or six quid, I think. Nothing expensive. But overall, the entire set, you could probably get like 40 quid, like a gas canister. This is not matte gas, it's just normal uh, butane gas. And you'll see the flux is being used there. I should have really used a heat proof mat. I ordered it, but it didn't come in time. So I thought I'll do it with that this time. And I was heating the pipe and then just checking if the solder was melting. Was it hot enough? And if it was, the solder will flow around. And that way, I just made sure I got all the way around. You can see here, normally when you put the lead on, you could take the flame away, but I knew it was at the right temperature because I saw the flux bubbling. So let that one go in, and then the same thing on the second one. Leave it a couple of minutes when you've done this, because obviously if you move it straight away, this, it might still be hot, and the lead probably hasn't had time to... Uh, I'm calling it lead, but it's lead-free, isn't it? It's a uh, lead-free solder. So similar stuff to use, uh, you use on electrical joints, like a soldering thing, but when you go to the plumbing shop, you just ask for solder, and they'll give you the right one. So all you do is you heat it, and then with your lead, you just push it on the corner, and you should see it just uh, flow in. It's like normally quite good. Uh, one thing with this type of gas is, as it moves, it can sometimes go off or on. So just it's maintain steady. As long as the preparation is done, you should be good. So you'll see here, really when you do the lead, you take the flame away, but yeah, in the moment it's fine. So you saw a little, little couple of drops of lead fall down as well, but that way I definitely know that it's gone in. 
and it's gone into the joint so i've had a nice uh, joint there and that will be all sorted out I mean, again this is a hot and cold water so it's a pretty straightforward thing i did a couple of uh, sections on there for a couple of feet so this is mainly remember for the toilet i'm going a uh, hot and cold water so the opposite end of the room it will come out so here's the opposite end of the room and i'm going to add a joint on here 90 degrees and i'll have a partition here so i'll have an alleyway for the small room so the small box room will have that and i had to drill through the beams uh, just to take the water through i drilled through a little bit lower so obviously if you screw it through the the floorboard you don't want to hit your pipes so make sure you're under the the floorboards by at least two or three inches if you can if you've got enough beam and you'll see i just placed down roughly where my toilet area will be with that plywood there the the floor and the pipes come up right behind the toilet so it will be a little bit difficult to explain i might include a sketch to show you what it looks like but here's a quick view of the toilet it will be placed here i'm not using the entire section i'll be using half because it's only a toilet so i'm only thinking around uh three four three and a half foot by two and a half foot like the smallest i can go so actually i'd end up doing something like four foot deep so you can see the measurements here i'm using and you can consider what you want to do and three foot uh two foot wide two and a half foot wide and that would be where the wall is so is there enough space just do a bit of prep and check if it meets your needs um this is just a partition wall just to separate things it's not really a construction wall it's not a supporting weight wall it just needs enough to make it like a separate unit um so i'm using some thinner wood here and i'll show you how that works out so again this toilet is like a two in one so the sink is in the top of the uh the top section so the water goes in and you got one place for the water to go out the sewer pipe so you don't need plumbing and lots of stuff so i did put a little bit of uh, markings on here so i know which direction to go added a piece of string so that wall partition is all straight and over the next day or so it's basically just getting this partition wall up and then plasterboarding it i won't be skimming it entirely but i'll be doing something that americans do a lot like they tape the joints and then they use a jointing compound i want to see how well that actually works because i don't really want to get another person into here to plaster it it's not enough of a job to get a worker in here and if you remember my recent extension build uh, builders haven't been great that i've had so overall here you'll see i boxed off the toilet area and i use these uh, wooden block beams which aren't really designed for this purpose so save your comments if you're worried about me using these because these are really like roof patterns it's a two by one so in theory it's very very lightweight but for the purpose i'm using it for it's i want to have as much room still available to me in the the room because remember we're separating a room into like a few sections so i still want it to be at least uh, big enough i don't want to end up using a foot worth of space for all the the walls and the the thickness of them and then adding any type of insulation because the house is already insulated now the walls have been set up the perimeter has been set up just basic tools basic kit and screwing them together using the right amount of thuggins keeping the walls secure i'm not going to have the ceiling inside the toilet up till the roof height i'm going to leave a little bit of storage space in the top which can be used in the room so smart uh, where you can be just have extra uh, space for storage like a uh, like a little uh, wardrobe but above the wardrobe kind of thing so with these now the soil pipe is the next step and this is where it gets a little bit interesting this can be quite an expensive project i will probably give you a breakdown of like the costs towards this end of this episode or another episode i'll need to go straight back and then put that down in this room we have a chimney so making those joints going through multiple walls is a lot of headache so what i'm going to be doing is going down from this room into my main uh, living room and then along the top of the wall you'll see all of that in this episode hopefully i'm keeping it all together with the pipes basically put a bit of pipe um, tape or mark around it and you know where you're cutting this is a quick little view of how to cut those kind of pipes overall again the whole process here uh, from more or less from start to finish i'm not gonna do my separate episodes i want you to see what is involved in this kind of little uh, project so you've got the toilet to worry about i already ordered that online so i had that ready i had all the pipes i ordered the taps i had to get these waste uh, soil pipes they're surprisingly expensive uh, each pipe something like 18 pounds for the black one it depends on what color you have for internal or external this one i'm doing as a measurement test but this is like a underground type pipe they're slightly made to different uh, specifications because the ones that are in direct sunlight have like a special protection uv type protection which is the black ones so what i used here is an angle grinder i put a bit of tape around and followed that around just to give me a nice uh, straight cut the better the cut the easier you would find this uh, slots into your joins because these big pipes can be a bit fiddly and also i use angle grinder make sure the angle grinder is designed to cut and grind 
because if it's not then it's a bit dangerous because it can break apart when you try and grind with it so what I'm doing here is just uh, tapering off the edge that I've cut to round it off what that allows you to do is it gives you a little bit of entry point into the elbow or the joint that you're going to put it in and it goes in a lot easier with the assistance of another tip which I'll give you a little bit later when I'm putting the joints together so just give it a nice little clean wipe off any excess you could use a bit of sandpaper if you want nice clean cuts are amazing same thing applied to the bigger pipe and just cut off the section you want and I do a bit of tape so you've got somewhere to follow around once I cut those off I had a 90 degree joint and then the section to go into the toilet and that basically goes directly down into the floor this box here would be the pipe would be boxed off I made a hole in the ground in the upstairs room which then pops out downstairs along the top of this wall there's no chimney in this room I'm going to basically take that pipe all the way along the wall and out of the wall all the way along the wall and out of the external facing wall which then drops it to my garden and then the soil will be joined onto the manhole cover outside does that make sense hopefully it makes sense you'll see in this episode what i mean by that uh, so yeah that is a bit of uh, work involved there you're looking at uh, like two days worth of work here uh, if you have uh, builders you're probably looking like a week's worth of work because obviously they'll take their time uh, if you're working on it yourself you know your own space and timing and you can work depending on how good you are with diy um, also you'll notice yeah, a bit of funky stuff going on so one partition wall is a little bit uh, closer one is a bit further away I wanted to make the most use of this new walkway that I will be introducing I want to keep the door next to the toilet door for the room for this room and then I'll have a little section where I can actually put a wardrobe for the small room so the small box room is like one of those odd rooms where the ceiling is sloped so you can't probably fully put a, a full wardrobe in there so I'll show you what I mean once I've done that there'll be a wardrobe outside in the walkway which is available for the small boxing room and the door will basically get pushed up a little bit. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't make sense. But I might explain it a bit better when you see what the end goal and end, end result is. So if you're not already following, subscribe and you'll see the later episodes. You can kind of picture and see what I'm referring to. I'm making these episodes as we go along. And these have been from last week, a week ago. You're probably seeing this in maybe April. April? Yeah. I've started this in start of April, end of March, April. Yeah. So that I spent in total about two weeks, I think, like from start to finish. Um, so, yeah, so there'll be a little bit of partitioning taking place, plasterboarding taking place. Uh, I'm going to also wire some extra lights because obviously the hallway will need a separate light switch. Uh, it'll need a light. The room will need a separate light because that light that would have worked on there is no longer part of that room. I'll have to have a pull cord in the toilet. And here's some plasterboards delivered and a bit of extra screws for fixing the plasterboards and the jointing tape as well. So these are 3.5 inch screws and three inch screws I bought as well, drywall paper joint tape. This is quite common in America, so apparently it's meant to be like an easy way of doing it, but we'll see. And I've got a light switch plasterboard thing. A lot of this stuff is bought from tool station and screw fix and whatever else. But that's the thing to jointing compound. I'll see how that works. It's like a knife. Uh, the jointing compound I'm using is this uh, jointing compound joint filler. I use this and I use the no-nonsense stuff from uh, Screwfix. So we'll see which one works better or which one's nicer. So there will still be enough room in this uh, room for a full, like a, a normal box room kind of situation will apply kind of, if that makes sense. So there's still room for a bed, wardrobe, computer desk and all that stuff. But when it's set up, you'll see what I mean. I'm also going to get another door because obviously I need an extra door. Plasterboards are fairly straightforward. Uh, use a standing blade, mark out where you want it cut and then break and you're good as gold nice and easy clean cuts and where possible the least amount of um well mishaps the best because you'd have less things to fill up and the least amount of joints as well because you can get plasterboards in different sizes and it works out for you so overall it's not a massive diy project i've done a fair few if you see on the mr make stuff channel like lots of little bits odd bits here and there it's just when you get lazy you don't really want to do jobs uh, but once you start getting rolling, you just do one after the other and you're in that mentality. If you haven't already seen, I've done like a little kitchen revamp style thing where I did uh, replace one of the larder units with a kitchen unit, added in an in stove, in like unit kitchen and stove and did a lot of work there actually. That ended up taking a four, three days, four days, like a weekend. So overall, this will be broken up into a few sections. I'll do all the internal work and then what I will do is when the pipe goes out, uh, there'll have to be a bit of digging involved and then the soil pipe needs to get joined onto the soil uh, location 
So I would suggest get like a builder for yourself to get this done. So it's all within spec and requirements. I'm kind of doing this to my set of guidelines because I own the house and I don't have to ask anyone's permission or anything. So obviously if you're renting or something, your landlord should probably be doing this if, you, if you're, if you you know, whatever. But it, everybody's uh, circumstances are slightly different. Um, I put these on backwards because I heard somewhere, if you want to do, heard somewhere, on a screw fix forum, some wise ass said, if you're going to joint use your plasterboard's uh, backside, as in the, the, the side of music where the text is on, but then I started doing some investigating after I put a couple of these up and I, I thought, no, 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 that's not right, is it? So you don't, not everything people suggest is always right. Do your own research and see what works best for you. Because I did a couple of these and then uh, I took a little break out. I thought, you yeah, know, am I doing, I don't feel like this is great. I'm putting them these on backwards. And then I did a bit of research and discovered that actually, no, you can do it on the white side. It's designed for plaster. However, they're tapered edges. So when you put a jointing combine on there, it actually works on the white side. So learn from my uh, learning here. I've found out that you don't have to use the backside of it. Apparently in the past, like historically, uh, some old builders uh, used to do the backside uh, because in the past the plasterboards were different or something. So now technology is improved, so you don't have to do it on the backside, basically. That's the moral of the story. So don't do what I'm doing here. Um, uh, do it on the white side. And you'll see I quickly adjust and then find out, wait a minute, uh, I need to readjust these. So I end up pulling them off and putting them back on again. Uh, and then then I'm basically moving along. So this is going to be the inside of the, the room uh, for the, the remaining room that's going to be left because obviously this is all one big room. So I'm going to have a room left. I'm going to have a, a walkway. So the extra walkway will make the third bedroom independent of all the other rooms because before I would have to walk through this room to get through the small bedroom and that small bedroom needed that and there'll be a wardrobe just here. So see how I made that indentation. There'll be a wardrobe there which will be accessible via the small room and I think this episode is getting a bit too long. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how I boxed off that soil pipe. And also looking at how I'm jointing all the joints to make it a bit nicer with the jointing compound. So on screen now, you'll see the next episode. I'll see you on that. And you'll see a little bit more about how I was going to separate the room and a little more information about how jointing works and if it's any good. Should you do it or should you just get a plus drain? Next episode, see you on screen now.